Hello, hello, and welcome, everybody. I appreciate you all being here. And of course, I'm getting the feedback now on my headset. Let's pause that. I turned off my audio beforehand. Somehow it still came back to bite me in the backside. Chattanooga, Ed, thank you for being here, my friend. As always, I do really appreciate it. Uh, we've got a what I think is going to be a fun topic and hopefully informative topic tonight. And of course, we're going to draw some information from you all in the wonderful community as well. Uh, before we get into that, while John is still going, let me say some hellos. Uh, we had Rockford Fish Keeping up in here at the very beginning, followed by uh, Chattanooga Ed, Sand Creek Aquatics, T-Bones Fishies, William Pride, Moore, Tim Carter, Dragon Lair, Sand Creek Aquatics 2. Hey, Amy, how are you? Roll down through here. Rico Stan, who's going to be lurking. I appreciate that, my friend. Colored Guppies, how's it going? Scrolling, scrolling. We have a good conversation in here. Susan Fress, LC Aquatics. How are you, Fish Fam Mom? Down through here. Cody Sun, GRB Aquatics. What is up? Sure. Okay, I thought I missed somebody there for a second. The Zen Ginger, hello. Rolling, 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 rolling. We got a new member down here, too. Lots of the back and forth, good conversation we were having. There we go. Epic Aquariums, William Pridemore, and our newest member, Scully's Aquaria. Welcome to the team. I do very, very much appreciate that. Thank you for becoming a member. I hope Ooh. you enjoy the members-only videos as well as the emojis in the chat and when you post comments, if you like to do that. Uh, I did post a members-only video earlier today. Um, it was the Shell Dweller Tank, a little preview for the members. They are doing really well. Um, edited in a little bit of underwater footage on that. That was fun. Trying to get <laughs> trying to get them to uh, come out of their shells long enough to get some footage. But whenever you get a chance, if you're looking for something to check out, be sure to go back and check out that members only stuff that is now available to you. I'm trying to get this off of the camera here. All right. Down through here. Lily Perez, hello, uh, saying she wants another aquarium. If her parents will let her, she'd probably have, I think, seven in the next three years. It's easy to get there. It really, really is. Um, you know, I'm, I'm getting close to triple digits now on aquariums, and it they just keep adding up. Like Guppy Guru, Mrs. Fever, hello, Scott's Aquatics, Justin Powers, Sean OTD, who's here to remind everybody to set up a shell dweller tank. Uh, Sean, I gave you a special shout out in that. I know you're not a member and that's fine, but I wanted you to know uh, I did throw it. Thank you to you for giving me the push to get into shell dwellers as well as helping me with information. Nerdy, dirty naturalism with abolished. I like that name. It says, cheers, my fellow fish nerds. All right. So before we get into the main topic, um, one, let me know if the audio is okay. I do have a box fan going at the moment had a little bit of a a life setback if you will i was sitting on the couch last night i was actually editing out uh, a much nicer shell dweller video for the members and i started smelling something burning and it was that ever familiar smell of a heating element kind of like when you kick your your furnace or your heat on for the first time uh when it starts to get cold and so got up got to look it through the house went down the hallway um which is where that central heat and air unit is built into the wall. And there was steam slash smoke coming out of the vent. And both of the panels that cover it were a, a little warm to the touch. We'll put it that way. It was not pleasant yanking them off. We yanked them off um, and realized that the heating element on the HVAC unit was in the on position and stuck on. Um, so grabbed the extinguisher because it was getting a little hot in there and I couldn't see if anything was on fire, but I know that the whole box in the wall was glowing bright red um, all the way down into the floor. And that element is actually down in the floor um, right at the start of the vent work. Um, so without pulling the blower off, you can't really tell what's going on down there. Um, got that taken care of. Of course, Mrs. Fever was getting the kids out of there because that is actually built into the wall of their room. The way that it, the house is built is they have a half closet and the other half of that closet is the HVAC unit, but reversed into the hallway. So she got them out. Um, but that's kind of what got me on this. I didn't necessarily have an aquarium emergency, but some fishy things have come into play with that. Um, but it was, it was an interesting night. Um, everybody is fine. Still needing to get the HVAC fixed. I've got it down to about 83 degrees now uh, it was about 85 or 86 when i first came in here to set up for the stream 
which is not too bad, but um, all that from wanting to make sure the audio was okay. That's why I've got the box fan going. I normally wouldn't, uh, but all is well. Um, and so, uh, this engineer said, have you tried Craigslist uh, to Pew Fish? Pew Fish is looking for a 200 plus gallon, or 200 gallon plus, yeah, fish tank. Craigslist is a good one. Um, you can mm -hmm. get on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I've had some luck on some of the other apps like Let Go uh, for different things. Sometimes the pricing is ridiculous and sometimes you can find good deals. I will also say for larger aquariums, it's great to check beyond just your local area. So if I get on Craigslist and I'm looking for like a 200 gallon tank, um, my 220 I actually bought from Virginia and I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, but uh, I basically the price I paid for it, um, I paid next to nothing for the reflight that came with it. It was a, a six foot reflight. Um, and the aquarium was basically free, but the moral of that story was if I hadn't been searching outlying areas to try and find those good deals, I never would have seen that set up. So I would yeah. give that a try. Now, Pew, what, what is your metropolitan area? And I say that over what's your hometown, because some people like to live in little bitty towns, but what is your like driving range? Like do you live in the Atlanta area or... Because it's also going to really depend on what size city you live in. St. Louis always had dozens of tanks, it seemed like, that you could find. But I've come to Chattanooga, and the tanks, there's a lot less, and people want a lot more for them because there's a lot less. I think there's no competition. Yeah. So, and Pew did respond. Pew Fish Zone said, uh, new tanks or stores. So if you're looking for a new tank, you're going to probably want to get with your local fish uh, store if you've got one. I know a lot of people don't. Um, see if they can get one ordered in for you. And then you've got places like uh, Custom Aquariums. Um, you know, send uh, John at KG Tropicals an email. Last I knew he was partnered up with them. Uh, they may be able to figure out something for you. But you can also probably search around and find an aquarium builder slash manufacturer when you get into big tanks like that um, if you're wanting to go brand new. Otherwise, the deals can be found. Um, I mean, I've got, you know, I got my 220. Lots of 125s, We've gotten some uh, 120s, which are the two by two by four, uh, kind of, uh, I guess what uh, Joey DIY, he's got a bunch of those, um, or at least he did. Um, stuff like that, I've gotten all of those used, got a 175 used, paid next to nothing for getting them used. They're huge. Uh, yeah, and there's in saying if you want to spend substantially more, you could try custom aquariums. Uh, you're gonna definitely pay a premium if you're going for a brand new one. Oh, he's in uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. Oh, I awesome! Why I didn't remember that. He's part of the Tennessee Fish Mafia. Yeah. But um, yeah, I would give those things a try, and see if you can't find one that way. That's that's yeah. gonna be my recommendation on that. Make sure I didn't miss anything else, real quick here. Um. All right, no, it looks like we're good. Uh, other thing I wanted to say, and I see Guppy Guru is in here, and we had some people order from Our Fish Collective. Our Fish Collective is a wonderful site that Guppy Guru has set up. Um, it's got a bunch of hobbyists that uh, breed fish and have them available for sale. So check that out. Uh, but I want to say huge thank you as well. I've got fish I'm listing on the Our Fish Collective, and I've also got a shop on the second page of the Fish Room Fever website. Um, and I mentioned that because got my first two actual official online orders in and I appreciate you all. Um, I won't, won't say names unless those people mention it, but thank you all very much. Appreciated. Uh, shipped one order out today and then got another order in this afternoon. So that'll ship out first thing in the morning. I really do appreciate it. Y'all are awesome. Thank you for that. That's awesome. I was going to make an order from him today too. Yeah. I Ed, <laughs> Ed made an order, but he gets uh, he gets personal delivery. <laughs> oh goodness, Grumpy Mike's fish dropping the ninety nine cent super pooper chat. I appreciate that very much, my friend. Always good to see you, Mike. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great night. Um, it's gonna be a little warm tonight, but we'll make it through, right? Right. So, did you have any announcements, Ed, before we got into the? Um, the meat and potatoes of tonight, if you will. When are we allowed to announce the next major competition? I think we can go ahead and announce that. 
Uh, let's ask Zen because she's the boss. Zen, is it okay? And then I have to wait 10 seconds because it's delayed. Right, Mr. F <laughs> Sorry. What? I hope she was listening to us. I am sure she was. Um, Lefty says, right now, go for it. Uh, since I started, let me say, Black Label Carling, Mr. Fish, sir, because Beth, hey, I hope y'all are doing well. I would gladly take some of that eight inches of snow just to kind of cool things down around here. But, uh, Ed, by all means, go right ahead with that announcement. We originally had Project Pacilia, and then, what was it, August Anabantoids, or Anabantoid August? Mm -hmm. And now... It's going to be Catfish Christmas. That's right. We're going to end it a little bit different. I think we're going to start it up at like Thanksgiving and end it on Christmas Day. And uh, you guys can submit any catfish. We're not limiting it because, you know, everybody's always bummed out about limitations. Yep. No limitations on catfish. Yep. If it has whiskers, it counts. If it doesn't have whiskers, but it's part of the family, it counts. From corridors to red tails. No dogfish. No dogfish. <laughs> now, what about my armored catfish? I'm going to sneak a pleco or two in there. <laughs> uh, well, honestly, plecos are catfish, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're considered an armored catfish. Yeah. So, I mean, well, <laughs> we might end up having a pleco one. So, if you do, please <laughs> up your pleco shots. <laughs> and there we go. There's Lefty with the details. He's also got a link there. It says Frogger Fish Fam Community Events. Join the Facebook page. He's got that link there. And then he says it will start November 16th and end December 31st. Yeah, and we have changed the name of the page. As you notice, it's the Community Events page where, uh, you know, it's not going to be the name of the competition. So that way we can put all the fish things from all the past months on there. And you can just have a fun time browsing everybody's stuff. Pretty Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Petzotic slash multiple aquariums with $2 super chat. I appreciate that. Diego says for meat and potatoes. Thank you, my friend. These are aiming really well tonight. They're all hitting right on the camera. I'm enjoying that. I was oh, saying, goodness. or thinking, your skills are getting up there. Oh, I guess we decided not to do it after Christmas. I thought we were doing it after Christmas so Lefty would have more time for winter break. But, you know, December 31st works for me. Furloughs Aquatics. Fisher Fever. Hope y'all have a good stream. I'm going to bed building fences all day. Whooped me. LOL. Mm -hmm. Eric, Furloughs Aquatics, you have a great night. I appreciate you swinging through. And thank you for everything you do, my friend. Uh, get you some rest. I know that's definitely tiring work. Thanks for bring, bringing safety and privacy to the American public. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Oh, goodness. Make sure I did not miss anything else. Oh, I was going to say... Um, Petzotic slash multiple aquariums. Um, sorry, mods, I'm asking you to do a lot tonight. I do appreciate everything you do. If somebody wouldn't mind dropping a link, Diego is a huge supporter of the fish fam in lots of different ways. He's a great guy. He's also got an online store, multipleaquariums.com. Uh, be sure to check him out because, like, you know, you go on our fish collective, they specifically have, like, you know, fish and live plants and snails and things like that. Um, I'm carrying just a few random things that I'm breeding plus various accessories, but I'm trying to continuously expand on the, the dry goods part. Um, and then you get people like multiple aquariums and he has got tons of stuff. You know, he's got uh, a big store. And then of course, you know, I can't, can't go too far without saying, you know, KG Tropicals, of course, another great place. Check out their store. Um, and I've got to love that. If you don't like Oscars, dot, 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 you know the rest. <laughs> I was looking at that shirt earlier. That's a pretty neat shirt. I like it. I, I had to wear it for the thumbnail. I was like, hmm, I'm going to wear it for the live stream. Let me throw it on for this thumbnail. I've got but the job. Without further ado, I think we're safe to get into the topic, I believe. Safe is the correct word to use. All right. Yeah, that was no pun intended either. Sandmouse 350 Twin, how are you? Long time no see. I appreciate you being here. Um, glad you got your YouTube fixed. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, I kind of had a, a safety issue at the house. It didn't necessarily pertain specifically to aquariums. Um, it did directly affect aquariums, but aquariums weren't the cause. But that got me to thinking about all of the different things that we maybe take for granted or don't really think of. Or if you're a new fish keeper, things that you may not even 
be aware of um, things like a drip loop. Um, some of you know what that is, and some of you are going, what's a drip loop? And we'll get to that here shortly. But um, one of the big things that made me think of it was is, as soon as I knew that the situation was under control, there was no immediate threat. Um, the first thing I did was <laughs> holler at Miss Fever and say, hey, Shai, will you unplug the central air pump? Because I didn't want all the fumes, not just from that the smoke, uh, but also from the fire extinguisher. I didn't want all of that to get you know sucked up into the air system and pushed down into the tanks. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's really what got my mind on it. Bob Kaler, Kaler's Aquatics. Good to see you, buddy. One of these days we'll get to meet up again. I haven't forgotten about those two and a half gallon aquariums. I've got some ideas for them, but thank you for the, yeah, I knew that was going to do that. That's why I looked at it. The string popped right out. <laughs> Bob always gets the defective one. Thank you for the super sticker, buddy. I appreciate it. See, Bob always gets the defective ones. Okay, this one is not for Bob. Let's see how the karma works. <laughs> oh, no. oh my goodness, that's three in a row. Hey, there we go. Bob, thank you for the stupid super sticker with the big drooly face. I appreciate that. I'll the tell you what, super the super sticker. It cost him a dollar fifty in poppers. Yeah. That, that, well, see, that's YouTube karma. That's the funniest thing. It's the only time I've ever seen it happen. But when I became a member on Bob's channel. It actually did not pop up the little green welcome thing in the chat. It's the only time I've ever had that happen. I was like, hmm, go figure. So I think YouTube likes to pick on Bob and I when we get together, it seems. I didn't think about it. I just joined it. As soon as I found out, I just joined it like when it wasn't during the show. Probably would have been cooler to join it during the show. Well, see, and I didn't realize oh. he, he had it until I clicked on his live and then I saw the, the join yeah. option and I was like, ooh, join. Well, we were in the car. We were driving, uh, I think, to Lexington or something. And my my phone was on GPS, so I couldn't to uh, I couldn't do it at the time. So I had to do it later. Gotcha. Yeah. See, I joined here at the house, but I didn't. I, I completely missed that. Nevertheless, oh. I'm going to jump into this so we can get through it because uh, we do have Chattanooga Ed coming up immediately after this right here at 11 30 eastern standard time and he's got a good show planned out for tonight but we're going to kind of run through some basics i know there are a lot of things that we aren't going to mention and you all are you know more than welcome to throw those in the chat and we can discuss them uh, but starting with the setup uh just a basic fundamental and a lot of these may apply more towards newer fish keepers but um you know still may be helpful for some people uh just keep in mind the structural integrity of your home and your flooring and whether or not that floor is going to be able to support the weight in the area that you would like to put that. Um, you know, it's a lot of times that may not be a factor, but if you're on a second floor uh, or you're in maybe an older house or um, things of that nature, just keep that in mind and kind of look into that. And then particularly when you get into larger tanks, I always try and run my tank so that it's perpendicular across as many floor support beams as possible. If you can figure that out, that's a, that's a great thing. Um, if you're not going onto a concrete slab, that will definitely help a little bit, uh, or especially when you get to having a lot of aquariums um, in a mobile home, you know, things like that. When you go to place that stand, you want to make sure that that thing is flush against, or place the tank, you want to make sure that it's flush against the stand. Um, I worry about that even more than I worry about level. Because um, you definitely, if you're going to adjust something, you want to adjust under the stand. You don't want to adjust between the tank and the stand um, because you can run into issues. Now, that being said, you can mount an aquarium. So we're just use my phone, for example. You can mount an aquarium where just the ends are supported. If you look at, uh, like, Corey Aquarium Co-op, his fish store, it's built that way. And then your fish store is built that way. However, you want to make sure that it's flush wherever it's touching at and that you don't have any type of debris between that tank and that stand. Uh, Joey, the king of DIY, he had a video a while back where he'd had a tank pop, uh, the bottom glass cracked on it, and come to find out he'd had a pebble. He had one piece of aquarium gravel underneath one of the corners, uh, and that forced it to be off, and the, the weight eventually cracked that glass and caused it to leak out. Make sure I didn't miss anything here. Okay. An explosion. What's that? Thank I think that thing just blew completely out. It was horrible. Yeah, I don't remember the footage of it. I know he had some footage. Um, 
Aquarium Co-op. Oh my goodness. I am graced and, and honored uh, says we use bullseye levels when setting up stands, place the bullseye in the tank to make sure it sits right. Beautiful, beautiful information. You heard it from Corey. So um, unlike most things on the internet, if you heard it from Corey, it must be true. Uh, that is somebody that I put a lot of faith in. I know he does a lot of product testing and experimenting before he actually will come to public and say, Hey, this is what I recommend. I appreciate you coming through Corey. And I appreciate that tip very much. Um, another thing you want to look at when you're setting up, setting up an aquarium and this thought came into play last night is you want to make sure that you avoid, and this might get into more when you've got a lot of aquariums or you're building racks, but you want to avoid blocking off any potential emergency exits or pathways, uh, things like windows. Uh, if that's the only way to get out of that room, you know, say like I've got one window right here. If a fire starts, in the hallway my only way to get out is this window i don't want a couple hundred gallons of aquarium in front of that preventing me from being able to get out uh, and that that actually came into play last night not with an aquarium but all of those tubs that i had used for my outdoor tubbing uh they're on the back porch i didn't really think about it they were all up against the door a couple of them stacked on top of each other kind of offset and those have filled with rainwater since then so that back door being right across from that HVAC unit, the first thing I went to do was open that back door and it was like a grizzly bear was on that thing because those were just, I don't even know how many gallons of water, but it was a lot. Um, so I ended up having to almost kick the door off the hinges just to get that door open. Uh, fortunately, we didn't need that emergency exit, but that's something to definitely keep in mind, particularly when you get into lots of aquariums and covering windows specifically is a big part of that. And then, Ed, you had mentioned, we talked about a little bit beforehand, uh, your slips and trips hazards. You oh, make yeah. Make sure that you don't have, a, you know, extension, which we'll talk extension cords in a little bit, but you want to make sure you don't have extension cords just loosely strewn about on the floor. Um, that if you've got, you know, aquarium racks or things like that, you don't have, say, wood bracing on that to stabilize it that's sticking out into the walkway that you're going to trip over or things that, you know, potentially be wet. Uh, which is why I do always recommend keeping a spare towel hanging somewhere. You know, most of us have our, our hand towels or a bath towel that we use to dry our hands when we are working in our tanks. But I recommend having one specifically for the floor. I have one that, you know, these floors are laminate, so I don't really worry about getting drips on the floor if I'm going back and forth with nets. But I have a towel so that I can immediately uh, dry that up. That way there's no slip, slip hazard. Uh, yeah, not it's, just, it's huge. Yeah, and it's not just because of emergencies either. Um, there have been instances, although rare, where people have slipped, fallen into a tank, broken the tank, and then wound up cutting himself. There was one guy that nicked an artery um, when he ended up doing that. So it's uh, just one of those things to keep in mind. They're, they're simple things, but I think they're things that us fish keepers that have been in the hobby a while or have lots of tanks, we kind of take them for granted. At the same time, it's something that a new person might not have in mind or take consideration of. Uh, and this is something that for many, many reasons is recommended, uh, but I've got some safety reasons for it. And that's going to be having lids on your aquariums. Uh, that is one of those things. And there are a couple of these things that I am uh, guilty of not following my own advice. But that's one of those things that not only is it great for keeping your fish in the tank, uh, which can actually become a safety if, issue if you've got dangerous fish, uh, so if you're saltwater, which I know a lot of us aren't in here, but if you're saltwater and you've got like lionfish or things like that, um, you want to make sure that you've got a, a good secure lid on there. My four and a half foot Tessalata eel, I have got the glass firmly mounted onto the top of that thing. Um, to where it's almost a hassle at feeding time, but that ensures that she stays in, the cats and the kids stay out. So that's a huge thing. And then I've got piranha. I've literally had to pick my piranha up out of the floor before because they've gotten, they've jumped out where the cracks are at on my tops. Um, so that's something if the, the cats or the kids are in here and a piranha jumps out at them, uh, that's definitely a safety concern. You know, they can, they can do a little bit of damage as y'all have seen in some of the previous videos. It also reduces the humidity, though, too. I uh, This summer, you know, I had like 50 tanks, and I hadn't put all the lids on them yet. Mm -hmm. And I had mold growing on my couches. 
outside in my basement living room area down there. And so, you know, I hooked up the, the vent in the ceiling to suck it out. I had to put a secondary vent or a secondary engine just to pump more out, you know, on it to give it just more than just being your bathroom. But the lids help so much. And, and you can tell just from evaporation, you know, because here in Tennessee, it gets hot and the water goes. But uh, once you get the lids on, man, it makes a world of difference. It keeps the heat in the tanks. Definitely good, good one, James. Absolutely, and that was uh, another part of it. Like you've got the the ductwork that you actually built into your fish room. I don't have that, but I do run the uh, exhaust fan in my bathroom that kind of links to my fish room, fish hallway area on this side of the house where the tanks are, and then I also have dehumidifier. And then if you get to like LRV's level, you've got, you know, 570 humidifiers going where you've got all those tanks because I've also had mold issues and that can be a serious health risk as well as potential for, you know, rotting things out. You get a lot of moisture, you know, depending upon how old your house is, it may not take a lot to rot out wood in the flooring or the walls or things like that. I've got a piece of sheetrock I need to pull before it gets uh, bad and replace it just from where I've gotten some moisture in it. Yeah, and I, I also have the dehumidifier also. I forgot about that to try to help. Whatever it takes. You don't want mold on your shoes. I had mold on my leather shoes, on my couches. Uh, I had a football that had mold on it. It was so gross. Anything leather was getting covered with this white mold. And uh, yeah, not cool. Not cool yeah. at all. Not cool and not safe. Um, especially. Then, I cleaned it though with half vinegar and half water. So the same. You know, the same thing you use for cleaning fish tanks, you can also wipe mold out with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, another big thing that I find, and this happens once again, particularly when you get into having a lot of aquariums, a lot of times we have a lot of hardware that's attached to those things, you know, whether it's heaters or hang on back filters, things of that nature, power heads, uh, sump pumps, things of that type we get into the electrical safety. And this is where a drip loop comes into play. Now I, again, am guilty of not always doing this. I do try to always do this. For anybody that doesn't know what a drip loop is, it's just simply having, say this is plugged into the wall and I can't see myself at the moment, but let's fix that real quick. So say this is plugged into the wall. This is attached to, we'll say your hang on back filter. You wanna have where this plugs into the wall a little bit, you get the rest of that out of there, a little bit of a downward loop. And it doesn't have to be a whole lot. But the reason you're doing that is so that when, if water happens to get on that cord or travel down that cord, when it gets down to here, it's going to drip down into the floor. Versus if you've got this plugged into the wall and it's coming straight down, that water can then run down this cord and into your electrical outlet. Um, that can cause it to short out. Uh, you know, best case scenario, trip or breaker. Worst case scenario, you're potentially looking at uh, an electrical fire, but it's one of those things that can be easily avoided if you just put a drip loop when you plug things in. Another thing when it comes to electrical, and I know a lot of us with a lot of tanks are guilty of this, and this is another huge reason. Um, it's funny that he's here, but it's another huge reason that I switched to the co-op pump besides wanting to go air driven on all my tanks was having so many air pumps plugged in everywhere. Most of my outlets were taken up by air pumps. So, you know, you got all this stuff you need to plug in. You grab one of these. It plugs into the two outlets. Boom. Okay, now I got six. Well, shoot, I need to add this extra heater in for the wintertime, or I need to add this power head in. So now I'm going to plug in one of these, and I'm going to add to that. You know, or I've, I've seen it go, you know, way out where you get a whole, you know, several of these plugged into this, and you're running 12 different things off of your outlet that's intended for you know realistically two things um so that was everybody's guilty of that too <laughs> i think almost all of us are and i still have things that are of that nature however when i do that i use heavy duty almost commercial grade so i've got one extension cord and it's actually a heavy duty setup the cord runs into an eight outlet uh box and it's designed for construction use uh, so it's very heavy duty I also know that my breakers will handle it, uh, but it's it's one of those things that you just want to be aware of that because you can potentially cause a 
fire hazard. And there we go. It says, go fish where I worked at had a 50 foot run of chained power strips. I got shocked way too many times at a couple burned up ones. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to jump back up here. I saw a couple highlighted questions. I'm going to grab real quick before we move any further, but I have a couple more electrical things to talk about. Whip swirl. How's it going? Says fish room fever. What about ponds? Obviously, I won't be able to put a lid on it. Chattanooga Ed, I'm thinking about installing an exhaust fan and dehumidifier in the basement to combat evaporation. I don't know the specific setup. I can't recall it at the moment for how you're doing your indoor pond. But I will say Haley has got an awesome indoor pond. Go check her out, Oddball Aquatics. Uh, she's got a lid on hers, uh, and it's an awesome setup she's got. So you may potentially depending upon if you've got a lot of rock work coming out or things like that, uh, may be able to work something on there. If not, there's really a not, not a lot that you could do to combat that other than just, you know, fighting the problem, which is dehumidifiers and things of that nature, uh, which you'd mentioned. Exhaust fan would be great. Like Ed mentioned, when he put his exhaust fan in, it wasn't quite enough. So he added basically a relay in the system that would help push that air even further through. Uh, kind of like what you would see, same theory, if you've ever driven through a tunnel and you see lots of fans going along, they use that to continually grab that air and keep pushing it because one fan wouldn't be able to do the job or two fans or five fans. So if you can't, is, a, go ahead, buddy. Oh, it's the noisiest thing in the fish room, though. So that's the one thing I do have to turn off for the, the streams. So, you know, that's the only bummer, <laughs> probably. Yeah, lefty three two one three a says my max is six power strips plugged into each other. Fisher fever. I'm lucky I've never had issues. Yeah, so if I'm going to have to use power strips, I've got some of the eight outlet ones, or you can get the nicer ones like Ed has that are the long bars. I prefer to use those versus multiples of these, but I like these just for small little jumps. Uh, if I've just got to go a short distance and I only need to plug a couple things in, or if Say, for instance, uh, one of my setups, I've got both of my heaters on this. That way, if I have any issue, I can just unplug this one or I can verify really quickly that my heaters are plugged in. And then I'm also going to run a temperature probe. That's actually in the Zebra Pleco uh, system, I guess it would be, since it's multiple tanks. But it just just be aware. Uh, I have gotten to the point at one point in time where I did start tripping breakers because I had so many things plugged in. But again, I was running a lot of hang on back filters, uh, a lot of air pumps. And now I've got it to where I can just have that linear air pump running. I've got my filtration and my air going super simple. And I want to say I've got at least 60 drops off of that thing at this point, And none of them are having a problem. I've actually got all the air cranked up right now on all of the valves with the, um, central heat and air being out because it's getting warmer in the house. So I want to get more oxygen in there just because the tanks are coming up a little bit. Uh, they're getting 82, 84, which for pretty much everything is fine. But uh, it's definitely nice that I've just been able to crank the air valves up and be able to deal with it that way. Make sure all right. we're caught up on that. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about, but if you're going to purchase products specifically online, uh, things like Amazon or eBay, and this is specifically for heaters, which I don't recommend just getting random heaters off Amazon. I've been, no pun intended, burned too many times. Check and make sure that they have the proper safety rating for your region. Uh, in the event that you do have something that causes a house fire, and this goes for all your equipment, especially buying online. If you have something that does cause a house fire and you've got insurance and they come in and they can find out that it was this piece of equipment that wasn't meeting safety standards, then you can be really out of luck because they can deem you at fault because you didn't have something that was properly safety rated. Therefore, they're not going to fit the bill to cover the damage. So that's something that's like way out there left field. Most people wouldn't even think about it, but it is something that I do definitely recommend you take a look at, especially when you get to plugging in a lot of things. So one, I think one final thing on electrical and then you can move on from that. And that is if you're going to use stuff like this, or you're going to use extension cords, make sure that you don't have them on the floor. Um, I think, like you said, most of us use some sort of strips or outlets or, you know, cords, things like that. Just make sure they're not on the floor. That way, if you do have a leak, 
um, you know, maybe a tank starts to leak or you overfill it because you're listening to a really good live stream and Corey's got you distracted and you just overfill the tank into the floor. Um, you don't want this on the floor with live, you know, being live, having power running through it. Most of the larger ones actually have holes on the back where you can use a little nail and hang it on the wall. These smaller ones don't, but they're light enough that I just use double sided tape. A lot of times I'll either attach it to the aquariums. The same thing with the screws. This screw was actually used for one in a different room back when this was set up completely differently. Uh, but that's going to help you not short things out, not get electrocuted, because uh, that's it's no fun getting electrocuted. I think most of us have probably been there at some point, and that's just not fun at all. But that's probably my last electrical tip. Uh, Ed, if you've got anything to add to that, I would absolutely love to hear it. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I, I think you did a pretty good job. How about having uh, lights that could fall into the fish tank? Yes, absolutely. And that was a big part. And I think I missed even saying that. It was on my original notes, and I don't think I brought it over to my pretty notes. Uh, but that was one of the big reasons for having a lid on it is also to keep your light out of the tank. I must say I am guilty of having a light go in a tank before. I think there are probably several of us that have had that happen. Um, so one proper mounting of your lights is important Two, having a lid on there definitely helps. You know, you bump a light. So things like this here, this light is actually sitting directly above the tank. It's not mounted to anything, but I've got glass across here. So there's no way for it to fall in. Now, if I have to get in there, I actually remove those lights or I push them all the way to that piece of glass so I can remove this piece of glass. That way I don't end up with the light in a tank again. So I've lost some really good lights that way. Um, and it's just not a, a safe situation to be in. You know, when we were talking about tripping hazards, and you talked about people slipping into their tanks, mm -hmm. and you said that you've known some people that have gotten cut real bad. Yeah. I, was, I just kept trying not to laugh because I thought for sure you were going to say fell in and drowned. Just, oh, no. I mean. I kept thinking, oh, my gosh, that'd be terrible. I mean, I, I guess it, well, in theory, that's definitely a possibility. If you've got little ones around and somehow they manage to crawl up there, they could fall in if you don't have, you know, a, a nice sturdy lid on top of it. Um, yeah. It doesn't take but a couple inches of water to drown. So that's another scary thing. I would have had two uncles, but uh, one of my uncles drowned in a pail of milk when he was like, five oh, yeah. years old. he wanted to drink the milk like the kittens on the mm -hmm. farm. He got his head stuck in it and drowned in the milk. Oh my goodness. I did yeah. not know that, Ed. And that's surprising as many stories as I've heard riding with you everywhere, <laughs> going to fish yeah. conventions and stuff. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, aquarium cop said, uh, you made me think of something funny. I should have a sound I can play at random that sounds like an overfilling aquarium. Yeah, that would definitely get people's attention. Um, that would definitely be interesting. Uh, you'd, you'd probably get me at least once with that. Yeah, John Cox says, plenty of times, fish room fever, old incandescent light bulbs that shattered when hit water. Yes, it's another thing. Depending upon the type of lighting you've got on there, those hot bulbs hit and they can definitely pop. Uh, that you could even go into, and this is going to be a lot more with reef lights, I think. Uh, I've not been in the reef part of the hobby for a while now. But I know at one point I had you know the, a six-foot light. It had, I think, 12 fluorescent bulbs and then it had three metal halides in it i mean it was the the full shebang and if you got water on those things they could pop really easily um, and then you've got glass going everywhere like you mentioned john very good point thank you for that all right rolling through here looks like we're caught up and good to go uh, just some random things, and I've already talked about one of these being uh, having an extra towel. You know, we all try and keep our, which mine's not there, our uh, little hand towels handy for drying up as we're doing things in the aquarium. But having that extra towel specifically for spills and things, because a lot of times if we're working in a tank, we get water on the floor and we have our hand towel. We don't want to use our hand towel on the floor because it's going to get dirtied up and then we're not going to be using it or going back and forth in our fish tank. So have that extra one. Uh, again, lots of bad things can happen, slipping and falling and hitting tanks or even possibly drowning in a tank, breaking a tank, um, or just falling and hurting yourself. Um, another one, and this is, this is going to sound odd, but I'm one of those type of people. I've actually got four in the house and I've got one for the car, but just a small fire extinguisher. If you're going to have a lot of electrical things running, and I think in general, a lot of houses somewhere 
tend to have a fire extinguisher mounted somewhere, just have a small fire extinguisher and kind of keep an eye on it and make sure that it's not uh, used up or way out of date. I actually grabbed <clears throat> one of my extinguishers and it didn't work. So I then proceeded to grab another one off the wall, but it was mounted differently than all of my others that I'm used to in the way that they hang on the wall. It had like a bigger plastic hook on it. So I actually ended up ripping that mounting hook off, trying to get that fire extinguisher down to go in there. Uh, so not just have one, but understand how it works and how to use it. Uh, not necessarily go spray the neighbors with it to try and figure out what to do with it. But watch a YouTube video. You're on YouTube anyways. Take, you know, 45 seconds and go, oh, that's how fire extinguisher works. Again, a very weird thing, but something that I have had come in handy. And it's one of those, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Another kind of odd thing I would recommend is a box fan, which hopefully again, you all can't hear in the background because it is burning hot in here. Um, <clears throat> I actually have a 20 inch box fan that I just use in the bedroom even when the you know HVAC is working properly, just because I like sleeping with a fan. I know a lot of people do, but it's a wonderful resource to have if you do get any type of fumes or smoke or anything in the air to be able to put that in a window, because remember we haven't blocked our windows when we set our tanks up. You can put that in a window and help quickly get that smoke and stuff out. Uh, you can put it in a doorway to help blow that stuff out and kind of get the air cleaned up. That way you can get your air pumps plugged back in and going but um it's there are a lot of weird things and i'm sure we probably got 20 or 30 random objects that people could throw at us right now and it would be i don't know why that froze on me um things that i i would never even think of delilah's critters hey how are you so speaking of safety you just reminded me of a sponge filter i need to add a check valve to yeah absolutely um that's another great thing is if you're going to have air pumps and you're going to have the pumps lower than the aquarium, throw a check valve on there. You know, it's a real simple way to make sure that you don't get water in your pump and ruin the pump. And I'm sure somewhere there's an instance where that water has gotten in that pump and caused a fire. It's bound to have happened over the years. As many air pumps have been used in as many aquariums as there have been throughout the millennia, somebody somewhere has done it. But yeah, that's a great one. Uh, and that is one of the perks of, once again, the linear air system. And I'm looking at the PVC because I actually need to uh, finish rerunning it. But uh, having all of those drops coming down from the PVC in the ceiling, it's wonderful not having to throw check valves on all of that because it's, you know, there's no way that water is going to go up and into that system. You can't see mine. Let's see. See, I painted mine blue, so it just blends right in. I love it. I, see it up. I haven't painted mine, but I will say, um, I know she watches the replay sometimes. Thank you again, mom, mom, a favor. She was kind enough to come back over when I moved the fish rooms around and help me reinstall the, uh, all the PVC for the central airline for that linear air pump. Uh, she enjoys projects like that. She's actually coming over tomorrow. She's going to be the one that you see doing the silicone work resealing the 220 gallon when that video does come out uh but she's going to be resealing awesome. it tomorrow it is uh, and it's always fun to get with her and work on fish projects she was here the other day she said do you need help with any of the fish tank stuff and i'm like there's always something that needs done if you want to you know we can build a stand or whatever and there's hc aqua jesse he had his wife do his yeah i remember that we were talking to him on a live stream and she was putting the valves in yeah <laughs> So we can't make fun of him for his wife if your mom's doing yours. I guess, John, absolutely. I don't disagree with you one bit. Like I said, I've got several. Uh, but John Cox says, need more than one fire extinguisher in the home. Does no good if you have to go through fire to get it. I agree with you completely. But I would rather you have one than none. Um, but by all means, you know, play somewhere it's smart. They're not that expensive, especially if you look at it in terms of, if I ever have to use it, it's going to be worth having it. Um, very good information there. Good tip. Totally agree with that. Epa Aquatics, how are you? Says FRF, what about uh, forgetting to disconnect your heater during maintenance and the cold water snapping the glass? If you just stick your hand in the tank, you may get shocked. Yes. So that is a fantastic one. And I have heard of that happening to people. I have shattered an aquarium heater before. Uh, generally speaking, 
And this is one that is kind of a, a 50 50 uh, catch 22. A lot of times you all may see, and I, I catch some, some crap for this, but you all may see that I have my heaters going horizontally versus vertically, um, or they may be at a steep horizontal versus um, sitting up. And a lot of times I've got those set to where they're just below the water line that I do my water changes for. And it's for that reason exactly. That way I don't end up forgetting because I have done that before. So that is a very, very good one. Um, you know, even with it still below the water line, like you mentioned, if you've got cold water coming in on that hot glass, depending on where you're filling it, the temperature variance, you could definitely shatter that. So good information. Safe is just to go ahead and unplug it. Uh, once again, I don't always follow my own recommendations, but I'm big enough to say when I screw up, it's my it's my own fault. Um, case in point, I've got a Jaguar cichlid that needs to go to the local fish store. Uh, I moved him into a 10 gallon because I was going to take him and then turned out they weren't ready. A lot had happened that day, um, but he's in a rack. And I went to feed the guppies that were in the 10 gallon next to him earlier today. And he had hopped tanks and eaten all those guppies. Uh, my own fault. I didn't have lids on the tanks on that bottom row on the rack. So that was my own fault. What could, what could I do but go, yep, you dummy, you should have had a lid on there. Oh, no. Well, but, they uh, probably look delicious to them, too. Well, and they would have, except I always black out with paint in between. I always do a blackout divider so the fish can't see each other. So, so it's just, just dumb luck. Yeah, he just happened to wander over there. He had no way of knowing they were there. Um, I wonder if maybe he saw that I was feeding that tank also, uh, because the way I noticed him was when I fed the guppies, I saw this big mouth come up to the surface. I'm like, what is that? And then I looked at it was the Jaguar and I was like, Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh no. So that, that's one of those. I know better, but I didn't do it. Which ones were they? Uh, it was actually, and this is horrible. It was the line that Mrs. Fever's working on. It was her first oh. experiment at trying to create a guppy line. Um, <laughs> I had to, had to tell her that that was, her line was not going to work out, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, no. um, and I'm not laughing at the fact that, that, you know, all those guppies were viciously murdered by that jaguar stick, but I'm laughing at the look on her face when I told her, unfortunately. Uh, but again, my own dumb luck. Fish Tank Barn, how are you, Mike? Says that uh, redundant equipment easily swapped out in case of failure, more for the safety of your fish. Absolutely. And there are a lot of things, and we'll probably do a live stream specifically about fish safety. Uh, this was one of those. I want to talk people safety because there are a lot of things safety wise that we don't talk about in the hobby for us. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, keeping your fish safe, keeping your, your levels in check, um, not overstocking, not overfeeding, all those things that come into the health of your fish. But we don't really talk about human safety in the hobby, if you will. And I'm not going to go into the far extremes of like human diseases and stuff like that um, or, you know, catching diseases transmitted from your fish to humans really rare stuff like that um there's just a lot of stuff we don't think about pegasus arena hey how are you i saw a highlighted comment there it is uh, says, is it normal for a bristlenose pleco to eat algae off your snail shell yes those guys will chew on anything that they find something tasty on whether it be a snail shell uh you know the glass yeah that's not uncommon at all absolutely love when i see little shrimp riding on the mystery snails just picking at their shells that's always a fun one but yeah, Mike, uh, with the redundancy, that is a great idea. I'm one of those people that uh, the good old saying, two is one and one is none. I'm all about hyper redundancy. I always have a, a tertiary. I'm like, okay, well, here's this one. Oh, no, I, all right, I need another one. Okay, I'm in good shape. So it's a definitely a good idea. We'll get back down here. All right, I don't see anything else highlighted that I've missed. If you had something that I did miss that wasn't highlighted, you could put at Fish Room Fever, and I would be more than happy to check that out. A couple of things I want to get to real quick, because we're about to wrap this up and head over to Chattanooga Ed's channel. We're going to have some fun with a different topic tonight. Hey, Danica Kenny E., what's going on? I saw you posted the uh, the tour of Father Fishes earlier. I'm um, looking forward to seeing that. I actually got to be there with you, but I'm still going to watch that because I was busy catching fish in tanks when you were filming that. Uh, Pew Fish Zone says, Fish for Fever, what is the GH and TDS in Knoxville area, and what does Ed have? My tap water is 6, uh, 150 TDS. So, to be honest, I don't know. Not tested either one. 
Ed has a TDS meter, however. I do. And I haven't tested it. <laughs> I, even, I, I bought it and I've got like this little bucket of tools that I keep next to the door. And I took it out of the package and I put it in the bucket. And I haven't taken it out of the bucket <laughs> to, to see what the actual what it comes out of tap. I can grab it. I'll get it right now. There we go. Uh, Grumpy Mike's fish is fisher fever. I bought those sumbas. Awesome. Those are beautiful fish. And I had somebody email me earlier, and I'm sorry. I, I know I saw you in here earlier, but I can't think of who it was, and said that they know that seller, um, and that person does a great job. So congratulations. Those are absolutely gorgeous. I am jealous. That's one of those things that down the road i would love to set up a tank for those but i'm glad that you got them and i look forward to seeing some videos on those mike so if you haven't checked out grumpy mike's fish go check out his channel he's gonna have some really really awesome fish uh, if you don't know what that is you can go look those up but i would just say wait until he gets those in the tank and hc is going to be mad because hc got for one of those uh the last couple things i'm going to get to real quick here uh leak detector which ed brought up it's always great to have a leak detector now, there are a lot of various things you can do, anything from a do-it-yourself leak detector made out of a smoke alarm to the really fancy electronic ones that sit in the, the corner and the top of the room and put out magical vibes and search for leaks. We won't go into how they work and all that, but there are a lot of different options for leak detectors. Um, it's never a bad idea. If you're using a sump, be sure that when you set your sump up that your water level it's going to be able to stay in the sump if you have a power outage because then once again we get back in the water in the floor and all those things so make sure that your sump is going to be able to compensate for any water that drains down from your tank and then building materials if you're building your own racks and stands and things like that just make sure that the materials that you're using are in good shape uh, try and look for any cracks or bows or bends or warps uh, and then use the appropriate hardware whether you're using nails or screws i personally use screws in all of mine um, and that you're getting the right length. I mean, you don't want to have that much of a screw, you know, times however many you use, holding up, for instance, a 220-gallon aquarium. When I build that stand, uh, I may film it. I've had some people ask for that. Um, I want to make sure that I've got a good solid setting that those boards are together properly uh, because we don't want 220 gallons to come crashing down into the floor. I'm going to switch over here real quick. And we've got about six minutes left. We can definitely take any other questions or comments. But I'm going to get this pulled up so I can say a thank you again to everybody for the super chats and super stickers, as well as our newest member. So funny. I, I think this might have frozen. It says we have 13 people watching now. I would dare say we've probably got more than 13 people watching. <laughs> Hope so. I'm going to refresh that because I always if like to say it. We love you guys. Yeah, we do love you. I love each and every one of you. Yeah, 64 watching and 54 thumbs ups and that glorious thumbs down as well. I appreciate each and every one of you, even the thumbs down. Um, moderators, you all do an amazing job. I appreciate everything you do. I cannot thank you all enough for all the hard work you put in. Uh, Diego would like to know what brand of TDS meter that is, Chattanooga Ed. It's an HM. I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, it turns out I need to charge it. So I put it in my water and I was going to find out what it, everything was. But yeah, it's got to be charged and it doesn't come with a charging cable. So I'll have to figure that out tomorrow. Real quick, I see that, it, that you are leaving. Scully's Aquaria, thank you for becoming a member tonight. I appreciate that. I hope you enjoy the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to the Fish Room Fever fam. Super chats real quick. Let's get over here and say a thank you to those people. Of course, everybody that's lurking and listening, everybody that has contributed tonight, it's been a wonderful conversation. I know we didn't go off of the chat as much as we normally do, but I tend to find that when we've got a decent topic, you all are fairly interested in it, and we don't have to, quote unquote, rely on the chat for it. Uh, but I love talking to you all, and I love when you all jump in and add your two cents, because that's what makes this community wonderful. Um, let's see here. Just you know what? Go ahead, buddy. Can I just say one safe thing that I do that yeah. you didn't mention was my racks, you know, they're just huskies. I got a bad back, so I just wanted to make it as simple as possible. But I screwed my huskies to the wall just in mm -hmm. case, like, a niece or a nephew comes over and tries to climb on my tanks or maybe 
a ladder falls or something, I'm up on top and I grab it. I don't want the whole rack to come tumbling on top of me. Absolutely. But that was one safety thing that uh, I did in my fish room that, that I can think of that I, you know, I purposely thought about accidents. Absolutely. Uh, Pig Sister Rena, Rena asking about the Fisher Fever stickers going out. I will have to ask Mrs. Fever. She's the one that's generally in charge of mailing all those out. If not, I've got to go to the post office tomorrow. I'll get them sent out. For anybody that may not know or is new to the channel, if you want some free Fish Room Fever stickers, I don't have one handy. They're all in the box. But, oh, hey, there we go. Send me an email, fishroomfever at gmail.com. I'd be happy to send you out some of those for free. Pew Fish Zone asking, uh, what's your tank water TDS, Fish Room Fever, or you know it works for your fish? I just know it works for my fish. I don't test it, honestly. Even in my shrimp tanks, I don't test it. And I mean, they breed out like crazy, and that's generally a good sign when things are breeding. They're generally doing all right. Real quick, a huge thank you to Grumpy Mike's Fish, Pet Zotic slash Multiple Aquariums, and Kaler's Aquatics for the ch super chats and super stickers. My teeth worked almost all the way to the end of the stream. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, thank you all for the great stream, the thumbs up. Y'all are awesome. Ed, what are we going to be talking about on your stream? Uh, tune in and find out. No, no. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about fish that you don't want anymore. Um, and I'm, I've got a few examples. What do you do with your fish that you have that you're ready for something new? And I used to be a hypocrite. I remember when we're going back to Joey, he got rid of some fish. I was like, what a jerk. Who would ever get rid of their fish? And I'm a hypocrite because now I've got like African cichlids that I don't want that I bought at the big fish deal that I was excited because it was just fun. And, you know, I want guppies. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with them. I've got a 120 that's filled with mollies. I got too many mollies and I've been thinking about trying to get rid of them. So we're going to just talk about different ways. Uh, James mentioned his Jaguar earlier today. That, and he's had that Jaguar for a while that he's been kind of annoyed with. And now it's really made him annoyed, probably. Yes. So, you know, just we'll, we'll just talk about ways that you would get rid of fish or trade fish or, you know, things like that. Absolutely. Again, it's been a blast. I appreciate you guys. Uh, replay crew, I don't think I said thank you to you all. I appreciate you. We've got a nice, strong replay crew that hits each and every live stream and leaves a comment. Thank you all for that. I'm going to turn it over to Ed, see if he's got this down pat this week. Don't be afraid to get your hands wet. Clean those tanks. Until next time, keep your fish healthy. Keep yourselves healthy. Catch yourself a little fish room fever. Love you guys. Have a great night. Ed's next. <laughs>